Mr. Charles, you may begin. Thanks, everyone, for attending today, and thanks for your patience. Uh, I know we're starting a little bit late, but we wanted to make sure all the people who were joining right at 10 Pacific time uh, could could dial into the call. So today's talk, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about finding the right bug spray. And I still remember back as an undergrad, uh, my, my first couple of programming classes, and actually there was one dynamic tool that was required in those classes, and that was Purify. And I'll talk a little bit more about Purify later, but as I was implementing dynamic arrays and hash tables and learning all about pointers and memory allocation and all that good stuff, I, I quickly come to, came to realize how important uh, it was to, to use tools in the, in the development process, and specifically tools that could help you find bugs in the code. And, and that's why um, I ended up pursuing tools as, as my research project uh, as a graduate student and, and developed a lot of static tools also, which we'll talk about today. And in, in my job now as CTO of Coverity, I, I end up out there in front of developers a lot. I end up talking to people about the development process. And uh, I still see a lot of confusion about exactly the purpose of static tools, the purpose of dynamic tools. Uh, what exactly do they do? What are they good for? And, and what kinds of problems they can, they can weed out in the code. So what I wanted to do in this particular webinar is to introduce you to dynamic tools and static tools to talk to you a little bit about how they work and what they do, some of the pros and cons of, of those, those methods for uh, really finding bugs in your code to, to make the, the quality of your software better. So this is an introductory course. If you're you know, an avid Purify user or Valgrind user and have been doing that for a long time, or if you've used static tools for a long time like Lint or, or the tool that we provide at Coverity, you know, chances are a lot of this will be review. But um, if you are new to those, those types of tools, please uh, do listen in, and hopefully uh, I can give you a little bit of knowledge. So on to this first slide. What bug spray should I use? And uh, hopefully the, the copyright folks won't, won't be too mad at my uh, lifting these, these images. But in, in essence, there are lots of different ways to go about finding bugs in code. And we're going to talk about dynamic and static tools today, but that's not the sum total of all the ways you find bugs in code, of course. You have manual code reviews. You have testing. Um, in the unfortunate circumstance, maybe you have customers who use your, use your technology and your software, and they find problems in it, and they communicate that back to you. But to limit the scope down to these two different types of, of tools, dynamic tools and static tools, I want to walk us through and answer a few questions that I hope will um, really cast, the, uh, cast the, the discussion. The first question is, is what exactly is a bug? And I'm not going to purport to have a, an answer for you, but there are a couple of different definitions that I think are important in thinking about um, when you're deciding how to go about fixing the problems in your code. And then I want to talk about what exactly you're hunting. What are the, the types of problems you're going after? And how do those split up? And what are the tools good for finding? And what are the tools not good for finding? And then I want to talk about these tools and how they work, what they do to go about their business, and how they weed out the bugs and the methodology behind that. And of course, what comes from that is the pros and the cons. What are the good things about these tools? What are the bad things about these tools? And then uh, to, to finish up and to answer the question, how, how can I actually start using these things? What are things I can do to, to get them into my system? And then I'll talk about a number of, of technologies, a couple of open source, a couple of commercial technologies that are uh, available for you to try out today in the efforts to, to making your code better. So that being said, what exactly is a bug? I'm sure many of you have seen the graphic here on this slide. You know, you, you have a bug in your code, and if you dress it up the right way, you might, you know, go out there and tell everybody it's a feature. Um, but I think it is worthwhile to dig into and to think critically about what exactly is a bug and what you consider not to be a bug. I'm not claiming that any of these particular definitions is the right answer, uh, but but rather. A, a combination or viewing all of these in concert is important towards really understanding what it is you're going after in the code. As I mentioned, I've sat in a lot of rooms with developers, and, and I'm showing off technology a lot of times that will find bugs in code. But I hear the debate, well, is that a bug? 
mm, I don't know, maybe this one is a bug, maybe this one isn't a bug. And you'll have two developers who see the exact same issue in the code, and they'll disagree as to whether or not it's a bug. And part of it, I think, is because of the difference in definitions. So let's just walk through these four definitions and keep these in mind as, as we reframe the rest of the, the discussion. So the first one, a bug is an incorrect behavior that is observed when executing the code. What this means is you're actually running the code, you're watching what's happening as you run the code, and something that is wrong occurs. You saw it crash, or you saw you know, a usability issue where it was running too slowly, or um, something that it was tangible when you actually executed the program. And some people even take this concept further and say that the bug is only a bug if one of the end users is, is using, the, problem, is using the, the technology. In other words, if my customers can't see it, it's not there. Um, and so that, that would be an extreme case of, of this particular bullet point. But the bullet point is really, I don't care about the code so much as what the code turns into. And, and it's a, in, in a, especially in the business, setting, that can be a very realistic uh, definition of the term. The next one, a bug is a flaw in the source code that leads to observable incorrect behavior when the code is executed. So what this does is it's similar to the first definition, except for it pulls the problem that, that's being observed into the root cause of the problem. And so it's, it's basically saying the bug is actually what's going wrong in the code, not what I saw when I ran the code. And yes, it might be a subtle distinction, but I think it's important to think about, do you view bugs as the symptoms, or do you view bugs as the root cause? Was it because on line 73 you forgot to call free, and therefore there was a memory leak? Or is it the fact, is the bug really what you saw when the system ended up um, running out of resources and, and therefore maybe crashed or whatnot? And so the same you know, issue certainly is true, but whether or not you think of the bug as what happened in the code or what happens at runtime can, can uh, affect your perspective. Let's we'll look at the third uh, potential definition for a bug. A bug is a flaw in the source code that could lead to incorrect behavior when that code is executed. So the distinction I'm trying to make here is that there may be flaws in the code for which you don't have a test case. You've never actually seen the code run in that particular context. You don't know that there's a customer out there banging on it that way. But you see something that's wrong in the code, and you believe that, yeah, this, if this were to be executed this way, it would be a problem. So again, we're distancing ourselves even further from the symptom because in this particular definition, you wouldn't even necessarily uh, have a um, you wouldn't necessarily have a test case or a, a root cause that could show you, yeah, this is going to blow up when I execute the code in this way. But developers would all agree that you know this particular case will cause a crash if it's run in this context. The last definition pushes us even further, and it states that a bug is a flaw in the source code that developers agree is bad code. And so now we've, we've gotten even a little bit more fuzzy in terms of the definition, but if you have um, a bunch of developers that decide this particular piece of code is quote unquote bad, um, some people would argue that that's a bug. And in this case, we have removed ourselves entirely from the runtime because there might be things that developers agree uh, are bad in the code that don't have runtime impact. Maybe the architecture of the code is poor. Um, maybe it's, it's poorly written in terms of the style that's used. Maybe there's a group of developers that are very rigorous about uh, even the white space and where you put curly braces and so on and so forth in the code. And so to them, if they are rigorous about those style requirements, even style problems in the code could be considered bugs. So like I said, I'm not uh, stating that any one of these definitions of bug is the correct definition of bug, but rather they all need to be considered when you're looking at what tools can do for you in terms of helping you with the quality of your code. And you have to understand exactly where you fall on the spectrum and how important bugs are to you of each of these types of categories. So that's why I wanted to introduce us that way. The next question I want to answer, moving to the next slide, are what types of bugs are you hunting? What are the, the things that are actually causing you the most pain?